Okay, in this video we're going to look at an upper Riemann sum. Well, what do we mean by an upper Riemann sum? First of all, uh, all a Riemann sum is is just a way to estimate um, the area that's bounded by some different objects. And in this case, in this example, we want the area. We want to estimate the area that's bounded by the function that I have listed up here, the x-axis, this x-axis, and this y-axis right here. Uh, now it turns out that this point right here is 1. Okay, so how could we estimate that area? Well, one way to do that is to build some rectangles. And I have a little bit better picture here of the exact same function. And you can see that I built five rectangles. Now you can see that these rectangles kind of um, are a little bit bigger than the area that I'm interested in. Which is why we call it an why, which is why we call it an upper Riemann sum. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what I usually do when calculating Riemann sum is I ask myself, what is the width of just one of these rectangles? If all of these rectangles have the same width, uh, what would the width of one of them be? Well, the interval is one unit long, and I have five rectangles, so it makes sense that the width of one of these rectangles, we'll just put W, equals the length of my interval divided by 5. Okay, that would be the width of one of my rectangles. Now, what about the height? What about the height of my rectangle? This is gets a little bit more tricky, but let's go back to the sketch here. And you can see that, that each rectangle intersects my function at the left endpoint of the rectangle. In other words, go to, go, to, go to each rectangle and look at the left-hand endpoint, and it looks like that we're, we're intersecting the function at that left-hand endpoint. Okay, so what is the height of this first green rectangle? Well, hopefully you said f of 0, and you would be correct. Okay, so what I want to do before I actually try to, to get a, uh, oh, an actual um, formula for my height, I just want to... I want to describe a couple of these these heights um, first. Let's go ahead and look at the first rectangle. And what did we say that the height was? Well, the first rectangle had a height of f of 0. Well, how about the second rectangle? What did its height equal? Well, let's go back to the picture. And now we're looking at the height of the purple rectangle. Well, how high is the purple rectangle? Here's how high it is, and it looks like we came over this distance, and this distance happens to be one width, and we know what that width is. So this height right here is going to be f of one-fifth. Okay, so the height of my second rectangle is f of one-fifth. Well, how about the third rectangle? Okay, the third rectangle is going to be f of, f of what? Well, let's go back to it and see what we have, this green rectangle. First rectangle was f of 0. The second rectangle was f of 1 fifth. The third rectangle is going to be f of 2 fifths. Or, think of it this way. Think of it as f of the width of one of my rectangles multiplied by 2. Okay, uh, again. Height of the first rectangle is f of 0. This is f of 1 fifth. This is f of 1 fifth times 2. Okay, so let's, let's write that. f of 1 fifth, 1 fifth, and then I'm going to multiply by 2. Now, would you, would you agree with me? Let me just erase something here uh, to make a point. Let's say that, um, would you agree with me that I can actually come up here and say one fifth times one? That's the same thing. Okay, so this is really one fifth. This is multiplication here. I know that looks kind of funny, but one fifth times one. Okay, well, what about the fourth rectangle? Okay, the fourth rectangle is going to be f of one fifth multiplied by three. Okay, and now you start to see this pattern emerging. And just to be complete, let's do the fifth one. The fifth one's going to be f of my width 
multiplied by one less one less than the number of rectangle than the number of the rectangle that I'm on in other words four is one less than the fifth rectangle three is one less than the fourth rectangle so on and so forth back all the way down to the first rectangle so how could we describe then this height more generally um, in other words what's the height of any rectangle well it would be f of f of one fifth multiplied by multiplied by one less than the rectangle that I'm actually interested in okay and the I all the I is is the whoops I didn't want that color I wanted uh, I wanted yellow all the I is is simply the number of the number of the rectangle that you want the height for so let's just check if it works if I want the height of the first rectangle plug in a 1 for I this is 0 0 times 1 fifth is 0 I get f of 0 if I want the height of the second rectangle then I plug 2 uh, in for here 2 minus 1 is 1 1 times 1 fifth is 1 is f of 1 fifth so it looks like my formula works so this describes really the height of all my rectangles in terms of this index that we call I now let's add up all of these these areas um, all at once and we do that using our sigma notation okay so hopefully you recognize sigma notation and we're going to take the height and we're going to multiply it by the width after all that is how you find the area of rectangles so what is f of this stuff right here well let's just go ahead and let's plug let's plug this stuff right here in for x right here okay and that's going to be that's going to be our new height so our new height is going to be 1 minus let's substitute this in and we get 1 fifth times i minus 1 make sure we put some parentheses around that okay this right here now represents my height okay of any given rectangle okay if I want the, the first the first one I let I be 1 if I want the fifth one I let I take on the value of 5 okay multiplied multiplied by what what are we gonna multiply the height by well hopefully you said the width and every rectangle has the same width so we write uh, one-fifth okay so this is how um, you you set up this Riemann sum now let's actually go ahead and calculate it okay it turns out this isn't that difficult um, in fact you could you might even just plug it into your calculator if you wanted to if you didn't want to um, do this by hand turns out it's not too bad uh, but let's just go ahead and simplify this a little bit so we get the sum from 1 to 5 of uh, well let's let's go ahead and first just distribute our our 1 fifth through so I get 1 fifth I minus 1 fifth this is all getting squared and and don't forget I probably should have put some brackets around here because that 1 fifth up here is getting multiplied through the whole height Okay, there's, so there should have been brackets there multiplied by one fifth. Okay, I'm going to actually skip some steps here with the hopes, with the hopes that that you don't get hung up in this this algebra. Um, again, I apologize if you need to see some of this. Um, I apologize. It it just would it's going to take a really long time to to get through all this it's not hard it just takes a really long time to get through it all so if I simplify all this if I just crunch the algebra it turns out I get the following I get negative 1 over 125 I squared plus 2 over 125 I and then plus 24 over twenty-fifths and again all I did was I squared this binomial um, subtracted it from one multiplied one-fifth through it and I and I get this okay now what we can do with this 
is I can split up the properties of my my sigma here is that I can actually split up this sum into three separate sums at the same time this constant can be pulled out in front of the sigma so I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone here and do the following we get negative one over 25 multiplied through the sum from 1 to 5 of i squared plus we're gonna pull out that 2 over 125 as well and it gets multiplied through the sum from 1 to 5 of i and then finally the last guy is going to be the sum from 1 to 5 of 24 over 25. Okay, I apologize for the mess here. That's kind of sloppy. I'm usually a little bit better than that, but not much. Okay, so now I'm again relying on hopefully your understanding of of how we would sum these. We have some summation rules that hopefully you have learned. Um, we have one for i squared. We have one for i. If you don't know them, they could be found in any any calculus text. Uh, but I'm going to take my my constant of negative 1 over 125 and I'm going to multiply it by this sum and that sum it turns out is going to be um, n which is 5 times n plus 1 which is 6 times 2n plus 1 which is 11 I'm just using n is equal to 5 and this is all divided by 6 plus 2 over 1 25 well what's the rule for this what's the the formula for summing from 1 to 5 of i well it's going to be 1 plus n which is 5 and then you're going to multiply that by n which is 5 again all divided by 2 and the rule for summing a constant uh, you just take the, the n and you multiply it by the constant so that's going to be 120 over 125 okay if you simplify all of this if you just kinda crunch the numbers and I'm not gonna take the time to do all that um, I think you can handle that arithmetic on your own uh, it turns out it simplifies to 19 over 25 and this is the approximated area the approximated area for um, for the region bounded by the curve the x-axis and the y-axis from 0 to 1 now keep in mind that 19 over 25 is an overestimate in the next video we're going to go ahead and look at the lower estimate uh, of the lower sum um, which will look like this and in the video to follow after that we'll go ahead and actually calculate the actual sum we will see you there